Authorities are also pursuing a civil rights, hate crime, and domestic terrorism charges against a gunman. Joining me now from Berkeley is Leonard Zeskin. He is an internationally recognized expert on white supremacist movements. So, Leonard, what have you observed uh, inside the United States within the white nationalism movement over the years, and what you see today? Well, what we've had is a geometric growth in numbers and activity since about starting in about 2015, 2016, as young people got active in the white nationalist movement, and it's growing very fast today. Why we is got that? A, we got a problem. Why is that? Is there any uh, particular reason why we seem to also be hearing more about it? Is it evolving, um, especially seeing some of these violent episodes connected to it? Well, you're hearing more about it because it's more active. Uh, during the Trump, uh, during the, excuse me, during the Obama administration, the white nationalists were still there. They were still holding meetings, but they were not having fast growth. What you had instead was the Tea Party movement, which the Tea Party movement took over the Republican Party, by the way, and they were anti-immigrant, and they had, a, they had a feeling that white people were losing control of the country. And those are the sentiments expressed in this uh, shooter's manifesto. And are you seeing this growth just in the United States, or are there other varying forms of this in other countries outside the U.S.? For example, we saw a mass shooting at two mosques in New Zealand earlier this year. Well, there's shootings all over the world, and there's problems all over the world. Look, in 1988, I was in France, and I watched Jean-Marie Le Pen march down the street in Paris on May Day. And he got 18% of the vote. But his daughter came in first in the European elections. That's a problem. The, the fact that England is suffering with this Brexit problem because nationalists, racist nationalists, have seized control of the issues there. And in Italy, we have a, uh, a, a white, white supremacist who's a nationalist taking control of the government. It's a problem everywhere. And we've got to stop it. So that being said, do you think uh, with what you're seeing now, will it continue to grow? And what can be done to stop it? Well, I'll answer the last question first. What can be done is people from every walk of life, every community have to stand up and say no. We can't leave it to the political leaders. We certainly can't leave it to religious leaders who have left it, who have left it off the table. We have to pick the discussion up in every community and say no to this uh, racism, anti-Semitism, bigotry, and we've got to get rid of it. Will it continue to grow? I'm afraid so. We're heading towards a demographic transformation of the United States. In 2042, the census tells us white people will be a minority and a nation of minorities. That's what the white nationalists are talking about. They're talking about they, quote, lose control of their own land. And in fact, they will be in a situation where they will not be able to maintain white privilege through democratic methods. They're in trouble. All right, Leonard Zeskin, thank you so much for joining us from Berkeley. We do appreciate it. My, 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 I'm glad to do it.